same meaning here, uh, tejas or the radiance in the form of the luminaries. External luminaries, luminaries are Surya, Chandra, uh, Lightning, Agni. Internal luminaries are the Prana and the Jathara Agni, the digestive fire, the body temperature, you know, and also speech. Now, the speech is uh, governed by the fire principle. And so, you are Yudhi Dharaha. Then, Sarva Shastra Bhritam Varaha. Varaha means uh, Shreshtaha, best. So, um, Sarva Shastra Bhritam, of all those uh, who are the wielder of Shastra, who have Shastra, which means referring to warriors and kings, I am the best. So, Bhagavan has said in chapter 10, Vibhuti Yoga also, the same thing. Shastra Bhadam Aham Shri Ramaha. So here this uh, Nama praises uh, Mahavishnu in his uh, Shri Rama Avatara as the best among those who have this weapon. And we know Shri Rama is the Kodanda Pani, you know, with the Kodanda. But the most beautiful thing is that Bhagavan only used the bow when it was ultimately needed. Yeah. So when there was no other way out, it was inevitable, only then the bow was made use of. No? So that is the remarkable feature of the Sri Rama Avatara. Sarva Shastra Bhitam Varaha. Then Pragraha. Here Acharya Shankaracharya gives two meanings. No? Pra, you know, stands for Prakarshena. Very well. And Grahaha is Grinhati. Grinhati means one who receives, one who uh, accepts. So, Bhagavan is praised here as the one who accepts all the offerings of the devotees without any judgment. Patram, Pushpam, Palam, Toyam, whatever is given with Bhakti, I accept. That is one meaning of Pragraha. Then uh, we have this Pragraha, the word means uh, rains. Not R-A-I-N, but R-E-I-N. The reins with which one would control the horses or, you know, the cows, restrain them. So, Bhagavan is praised here as a Pragraha. Because Bhagavan is the Sarathihi. You know, this uh, comes in the Ratha Kalpana, which you have seen. Atmanam Rathinam Vithi Shariram Rathamevatu. Buddhihi tu sarathi manaha pragraha eva. So if the body is a chariot, sense organs are the horses and the jiva is a traveler, the buddhi is who? The charioteer or the driver in modern times. No? The driver behind the steering wheel and the pragraha is the reins. No? So Bhagavan is praised um, here as the one who is holding the reins by which we gain mastery over the mind. Pragraha. We are going to see this mantra in Kathopanishad. It comes there. Atmanam, uh, Rathinam, Vithi, Ityadi. Then we have Naika Shringaha. Unusual Nama here. Naika Shringaha is uh, Na Eka Shringaha. Na Shringaha means horns. The horn. So, Bhagavan is praised as the one who does not have one horn, but four horns. And this is a, a figurative usage here. Horns are referring to the four Vedas. No? So, the one who is the author of the Vedas, who manifests the four Vedas or endowed with the Vedas is Naika Shringaha. Hmm? Then the last Nama here is Gada Grajaha. Gada Grajaha. Oh, I missed one more. <laughs> Vyagraha. Yes. Vyagraha, uh, I missed. Yeah, Nigraha. Yes, two Namas I missed. Correct. Lata and Lakshmi. Thank you. So, Nigraha. We have seen this also. Nigraha means mastery. So, the one who controls, the one who is the order, the Niyatihi. And how does Bhagavan do that? Through the laws, the law of dharma, law of karma, you know, whoever transgresses the law, there are consequences to be faced. 
So Bhagavan, you are the the controller, the ordainer, nigraha, by which you ensure the universal dharma, nigraha. Then vyagraha. Here there are two meanings. See the literal meaning of vyagraha means uh, disturbed, agitated. So it appears that Bhagavan also gets disturbed. Why? Because <laughs> Bhagavan is disturbed because all the devotees are disturbed. You know, the devotees are all afflicted and uh, seeking help. And so, Bhagavan appears to be disturbed. That is one meaning, Vyakraha. The second meaning Acharya gives is Agra. Agra means what? The tip. You know, in the morning when we get up, what is the first shloka we say? Karagre Vasati Lakshmi. That is, the Agra, Agre of my hand, may Mahalakshmi be present today. So, Agra means the tip and the tip means the end. The end of what? All the Nama Rupas. So, Agra refers to the, um, the end. No? But Bhagavan is uh, Vina Agra. Vyagra is Bhagavan has no end. Bhagavan is limitless. Neither end nor beginning. So, that is the deeper meaning. Vyagraha is the one who has, uh, who is Anadi and Anantaha. Then the last Nama uh, is Gada Grachaha. So here the two words are Gada, Gada and Agrachaha. Agrachaha you know is the elder brother. <laughs> yeah. So it seems the Puranas mentioned that Sri, in the Sri Krishna Avatar, Krishna had a younger brother called Gada. Anybody heard of that younger brother? I had not heard also. So, one Gada brother is there, maybe a cousin brother, who knows. So, Krishna is, uh, you know, in the Krishna Vatara is the Agraja. Hmm? Then, the second one is more interesting. See, Gada is short for Nigada. And Nigada means Vedas or Vedic rituals. And Agraja is referring to the first born of the Vedic sacrifice or ritual performed by Dasharatha, King Dasharatha. And who is that? Sri Rama. So Sri Rama is Gada Grajaha, who was the foremost, the first born to Kaushalya Devi uh, in the uh, Putra Kameshti Yaga. Hmm? So that Gada uh, refers to the Yaga, hmm? the Vedic Yaga. Okay. So these are the uh, namas in uh, 81. Tejo vrisho dyati dharaha sarva shastra pratam varaha Pragraho nikraho vyakro naika shringo gada grajaha Then we go to 82. And here you notice again we have all the namas except the last one starting with chatur. Or Chatus, that is going to be the prefix. Chatur Murtis Chatur Bahus Chatur Buhas Chatur Gatihim Chatur Murtis Chatur Bahus Chatur Buhas Chatur Gatihim Chatur Atma Chatur Bhavas Chatur Veda Vide Kapat Chatur Atma Chatur Bhavas Chatur Veda Vide Kapat Here we have these eight namas chatur murtihi chatur bahuhu chatur vyuhaha chatur gatihi chatur atma chatur bhavaha chatur vedavit and ekapat yeah. so chatur you know uh, means uh, it can have two meanings one is uh, chatur means uh, clever daksha skillful and the other is uh, four so let's see what do they mean here with this prefix. First is Chatur Murtihi. Murtihi means form. So Bhagavan is praised here as the one with four forms or fourfold. We can say actually it is fourfold is better. So what are the fourfold forms? And uh, you know here the entire Vedanta comes here. No. So, how is that? Because the three forms are 
these three states, you know, if you take the prapancha, the whole jagat, what are the three states of existence? The first is the causal state, abhyakta. That is called Ishvara stage. Yeah. Then when that avyakta begins to become vyakta, manifest, we have the total subtle universe. And there, it's, uh, Bhagavan is called Hiranyagarbha, the cosmic mind. And then when the gross worlds appear, then Bhagavan is called Virat. Now we have seen uh, Bhufpada, Yasyanabhya, all those shlokas in praise of Virat. So, the Virat Swarupa, the Hiranyagarbha Swarupa and the Ishvara Swarupa in these three states, gross, subtle, causal, are three forms. Then what is the fourth form? Chatur Murti, you know, we want fourth is formless. <laughs> formless means Nirguna Parabrahma Shuddha Chaitanyam. So that alone, the Nirguna Parabrahma alone, you know, runs through all the other three. It is the Adhara for the other three. But here Bhagavan is praised as uh, this uh, four-fold nature. You know? Or a simpler meaning also given uh, in the commentary is the Trinity. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva with the functions of, you know, Srishti, Siti, Laya plus the Nirguna, Shuddha, Chaitanya. So we have four in total. Then we have Chatur Bahu, very familiar, Upasya Murti is there, Shankar Chakra Gada Haste, you know, how uh, in the Saguna form, when we want to do Upasana, we invoke the Lord with the Shanka, with the Chakra, with the Gada, Mace, and the fourth is uh, the Abhaya Mudra. And there, that is the Maash Chaha, you know, do not worry, take refuge in my lotus feet. That is the Upasya Mukti. Then Chatur Vyuhaha. Chatur Vyuhaha means the four, uh, four Vyuhas. Vyuhas means what? Arrangement. You know, in the Mahabharata, you would have heard of the, you know, each army was preparing all these Vyuhas. You know, Chakra Vyuha, Padma Vyuha. And that is how poor Abhimanyu got caught in one Vyuha because he knew how to enter, but he did not know how to exit or he was blocked from exiting maybe. So, Vyuha is an arrangement. Yeah? So, one meaning here um, Acharya gives is that look at our body. You know, the body also has uh, Vyuhas. Yeah? What is the outermost arrangement? That is the physical Vyuha. Annamaya Kosha. And then we have subtler Vyuhas. Second is the physiological kosha, pranamaya kosha, that is another vyuha, also called biological kosha. Hunger and thirst happens here. Then manomaya kosha is the psychological, emotional vyuha. And then finally, not finally, vijnanamaya kosha is the fourth kosha, the intellectual vyuha. No? And anandamaya is... Um, is the ignorance, you know, is the karana sharira. Anando, Brahmiti, Prajanat. One mantra says that Anandamaya Kosha is Brahma because that is where the Anandam manifests. So Bhagavan is praised here as these uh, four kinds of, um, you know, uh, Koshas or levels of our personality. Then another meaning also is given as how Bhagavan manifested as the four important uh, manifestations, no? Sankarsana, uh, Pratyumna, Aniruddha and Vasudeva. These four incarnations are can also be taken as the Chatur Vyuhas. Then we have Chatur Gatihi. Now Gatihi we saw earlier also in the last session, Sat Gatihi means uh, gati means abagati, the goal. So here Bhagavan is praised as the gati or the goal, which is uh, attained by the fourfold arrangement. And that is the arrangement of varna ashrama vyavastha. There are four varnas and there are four ashramas. And the goal is Bhagavan. So you are chatur gatihi. The goal in each stage. But the 
Jiva uh, matures through each ashrama to finally reach the Gati, which is Bhagavan. So, Chatur Gati. Then we have um, Chatur Atma. Chatur Atma, here Atma has to be taken as uh, mind. Okay. Here we can apply both the meanings. Chatur Atma means clever mind. So, Bhagavan has such a dexterous, skillful mind to manage the world show. That is one meaning. And the second meaning is, you know, we have seen this in Tattva Bodha, how every mind has four functions. Mind is one, but there is Manas, Buddhi, Ahankara, Chitta. So, Manas is the emotional faculty. Buddhi is the determining faculty. Ahankara is the owning up faculty. Karta Bhokta. And finally, Chittam is the memory database. So, all these, you know, uh, cooperate with each other for any cognition. Now, if I want to recognize anything, like a person, like all of you in front of me, all these are working in unison. So, how, what a beautiful arrangement. And so, that is, Bhagwan is praised as Chatur Atma. Then, Chatur Bhavaha. Chatur Bhavaha means Bhava is the source here. Bhagwan, you are the source of the four. What are the four here? Here, the four refer to the Purusharthas. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. So, the Chaturvidhaha Purusharthas are the means to reach you. And you are the Bhava, the essence or the goal. So, you are Chatur Bhava. Then, Chatur Vedavit. Chatur Vedavit is uh, the Chatur Vedas, we know, four Vedas. And you are the knower. No, you are not only the knower, you are the one was manifested, you are the knower, you are the author, you are the topic of the Vedas also. So, Chatur Vedavit. Then we have Eka Path. So, a path here is a Pada. And Pada means what? A quarter. So, remember at the end of chapter 10, after giving the 75 plus Vibhutis, you know, Bhagavan says, Vishtapyahamaham idam pritsnam jagat. Eka Amshena Sthitahar Jagat. So, O Arjuna, I have described, given a few glories, you know, visible, manifest glories. But you know what? The entire Jagat I uphold with Ekena Amshena, with just one Amsha. And that is the meaning here. With just one quarter, the entire Brahmanda is upheld. Then what about the three quarters? Three quarters is beyond and which is what science is calling as dark matter. We don't know. So that is the extent. You know, we can never find out the extent of Bhagavan. That's the essence of this uh, Nama here. Eka path. That is unknown. So I think we covered all the Mahamas here. 82. Chatur Murtis Chatur Bahus Chatur Vyuhas Chatur Gatihi Chatur Atma Chatur Bhavas Chatur Veda Vide Kapath. Now 83. Here we will find a few Namas with the prefix Dur. And Dur, you know, is a, gives a negative uh, connotation in the sense of difficult or inaccessible like that. But let's see what the namas are. Samavarto nivrittatma, samavarto nivrittatma, durja yoduratikramaha, durja yoduratikramaha, durlabho durga modurko, duravaso durariha, durlabho durga modurkaha, duravaso durariha. The nine namas are samavartaha, ani prittatma. Now, this Anivrittatma, because of Sandhi rules, can also be taken as Nivrittatma. Okay? Both meanings we can take. Durjayaha, Duratikramaha, Durlabaha, Durgamaha, Durgaha, Duravasaha and Durariha.
So first we will take the samavartaha. Sam, you know, is samyak. And avartaha means avartayati. Avartayati means the one who makes something go round and round and round without stopping. And what does that refer to? The samsara chakra. So, Bhagavan, you are the cause of this entire Kali chakra, samsara chakra to go round and round. And us also along with it. Now, in chapter 18, we are going to see a shloka in the Gita. Ishvara sarva putanam pritte shet chinatishthati brahmayan sarva putani yantra rudhani mayaya. So, where Krishna says, by the power of Maya, it is as though all the jivas are mounted on this giant wheel, yantra, and it is going round and round with a tremendous velocity. So, you are Sama Vartaha, praising Bhagavan as the rotator. <laughs> then we have Anivrittatma. Now, Anivrittatma means the one who uh, never retreats, you know, who never returns. Yeah, and what does that mean? That means Bhagavan is everywhere, all pervading. So only if we go somewhere, can I come back, right? So the body will go from point A to point B and it can retreat. But if Bhagavan is everywhere, wherever he go, that is Bhagavan. Then where is the question of going and retreating? So, Anivrittatma is one meaning. Then I told you, we drop the A uh, and then just take Nivrittatma. So, Nivrittatma means whose mind is always Nivritta. Nivritta means what? Turned away. Turned away means ever in Samadhi. Because Bhagavan is the embodiment of dispassion. Yeah, he is not attracted towards the objects of the world. He is very, very objective and neutral. Udasinaha. And that's the second meaning of uh, this Anivrittatma, where we drop the A uh and take Nivrittatma as the meaning. Hmm? Nivrittaha Atma Yasya Saha. Then we have Durjayaha. <laughs> Durjaya is easy. You know, uh, that is. Uh, Difficult to conquer, not difficult, unconquerable. So, Bhagavan can never be defeated, unconquerable. Then, Duratikramaha. So, Atikramaha, Atikramaha means, refers to a limit. Yeah, limit which is the order. You know, like we see in nature. Yeah, there is, uh, the oceans will not cross the limit. They remain there by the side of the continent. Yeah, and uh, the speed we see of the planets and satellites, they will not cross the limits. So why? Because there is an order, universal order. And that is praised here as Duratikramaha, whose order or law or uh, the, you know, the function, the law cannot be transgressed. Nobody can escape the law. The law of karma is invaluable. If I throw something up, it has to come down. If I open my eyes and if my eyes are functioning, sight will happen. And because there is a subtle law in place, no? perception will happen. So all these laws put together is called by one word, order. So that order uh, functions very beautifully and uh, you know there is no failing of that order. Durati Kramaka. Then Durlabhaha. Durlabhaha means Dukhena Labhyate. Bhagavan is praised as the one who is gained uh, with difficulty or not gained easily. <laughs> now, you know, Ramana Maharishi has often said Bhagavan is Sulabha and not Sulabha. Maharishi has used the word Ati Sulabha <laughs> in one song. Ati Sulabha is Bhagavan. Now, why, how come this contradiction? Because for the mind that is Samskrita Manas, which is prepared and ready and turned inwards and focused and steady, Bhagavan is Sulabha because he is the very Atmatattva. 
But for the mind that is chanchala, for a mind that is extroverted, desire oriented, durlava. No? That is the idea. So that's why in the Gita also Krishna has said, Bahunam Janmanam and Vasudevaha Sarvamiti Sa Mahatma Sudurlavaha. Jnanavan Maam Prapatyati. So this uh, Samskrita Manas or the one who gains me, such a mind is perfected over many births and such a Mahatma is Durlabha. There also we saw this word, Durlabha. So here, Durlabha is uh, from the point of view. Then Durga Maha, Dukhena Gamyate. So the one who is known with great difficulty. Again, the same, uh, the meaning uh, as Durlabaha is that when there is the uh, Adhikaritvam is there. Yeah? Ananya, Ananya Bhakti. That is, I want only Ishwara, pursuit of Ishwara. Then that one pointed commitment, definitely Bhagavan can be sought after and obtained. But if the mind is Bahushakaha, the commitment is to various things, then it is Dukkhena Lakhyate, Durga Maha. And that is why Guru Kripa, Shastra Kripa, Atma Kripa is so very important to gain, um, you know, Bhagwan. Then Durgaha. Durgaha is again difficult to attain. Now Durga also, Durgaha also, I think, means a fort. And, uh, you know, if you see the forts of Maharajas, they are, you know, on top of a mountain and there will be a moat around it. It's impenetrable. So the same thing. Bhagavan is uh, so ati sukshma that he is uh, Durgaha. The nature is unfathomable. But for the Mamukshu who has Ananya Bhakti, he is Sukhena Nabhyade. Easily obtained. That is the idea. Then Duravasaha. Duravasaha is, uh, you know, Bhagavan is not easy to meditate upon, to dwell upon. Yeah? And this is what Arjuna asks in chapter 12, Gita also. You know? That is the one, uh, you know, who meditates upon you, Krishna, in your uh, Avyayam, you know, Avyayam form, is that easier? Or in the Saguna form? And Krishna says, obviously, Saguna form. Even Saguna meditation, our mind will drift off. No, being the nature of the wandering mind. What to speak about the higher stages of Nidhi Vyasana. And hence, uh, this is Duravasaha. Then the last Nama here is Dura Riha. And Ha, you know, is Hanti. Hanti means to destroy. And Ari Shabda is there. You know, uh, the worst wicked enemy is Durari, Hanti. So the one who destroys the enemies, be it the Kamakrodha, the internal enemies or the external enemies, uh, you know, Bhagavan finds a way to punish them. Either he will descend as Navatara or through, you know, other means destroy the Adharma. So that those are the Namas here in 83. Samavato nivrittatma durjayo duratikramaha durlabho durgamo durgo duravaso durariha. Then we move on to 84th. Shubhango lokasaranga stutantu stantu vadhanaha. Shubhango lokasaranga Sutantu stantu vadhanaha Indra karma maha karma krita karma krita gamaha Indra karma maha karma krita karma krita gamaha Here we find these uh, eight namas Shubhangaha you know, We just saw this similar meaning in the last session no? Hemangaha, Varangaha, Chandananga like that Similar meaning, Shubhangaha. Then, Loka Sarangaha. Then, Stutantuhu. Su, Sutantuhu. Then, Tantu Vardhanaha. 
सुतंतु एंड तंतु अथर इंद्र कर्मा महाकर्मा कृतकर्मा कृतागम lot of krithatu words there in the end of this words shubhanga first no shubhani angani yasya saha the one who has beautiful auspicious uh, limbs and we also saw that you know which are golden yeah or which are shining which are uh, anointed with chandanam and which are holding these beautiful weapons no shanka chakra gadha all these are uh, you know the meaning of shubhangaha then lokasarangaha lokasarangaha so sara you know is uh, sarangaha or sara is the essence so what is the essence of the entire lokas acharya says it in very simply it is pranavaha omkara you know omkara is such a powerful mantra but it covers everything the entire saguna jagat and the nirguna para brahma akara ukara makara are these uh, you know the entire jagat and then the silence that follows the omkara is the nirguna para brahma so what is the essence of the all the lokas is omkara or pranava so loka saranga means bhagwan says i am the essence of all the lokas and through that omkara mantra you can gain me that is one meaning you know by, by the omkara meditation and understanding what is omkara then another meaning acharya gives us you know sarangaha refers to the the honey bee you know very beautiful in sanskritam as for the function we will have names yeah so a sarangaha refers to the bee that uh, will collect uh, this uh, honey from flower not the entire thing little by little it will cover it will collect from each and then give us one honey as the sara sarangaha and so here bhagwan says that um, you know i am the essence of the entire lokas pranavah then we have sutantu now tantu tantu means the yarn you know the thread by which one weaves a fabric so uh, bhagwan is praised here as sutantu means a very beautifully uh, woven the carpet or the fabric that is the entire jagat so bhagwan is praised as the tantu as the yarn or as the tatvam which has manifested as the embroidered colorful vichitram jagat sutantu so, no the yarn and uh, that also again comes from the dhatu tan tan no remember the birthday song today kumuda is not here it's a birthday today shamtanotu te sarvada mudam sham tanu tu te sarvada mudam may you always spread happiness tanu tu so comes from tan dhatu so here bhagwan is praised here as a beautifully expanded universe of nama rupa colors kriyas sutantu so, then tantu vardhana vardhanam you know means to grow yeah and uh, you know tantu is this this yarn so it is as though bhagwan is embroidering the jagat and making everything grow you know today science is telling us that the galaxies are growing growing apart they are moving away and uh, families grow nature grows up to a certain point then this uh, vard vard dhatu also means to cut not only grow but to cut also so at pralaya kala what does bhagwan do he just cut the thread and everything embroidery everything mountains rivers continents jivas will be all withdrawn huh? that is another meaning tanu uh, tantu vardhana then indra karma 
Karma is actions and Indra. So Indra being the Lord of Heaven, his actions are very uh, glorious. So Bhagavan is praised here as you know the the glorious uh, you know, karmas of the great Indra, as Indra. Then Mahakarma is the one who performs the great cosmic actions, Swishti Siti Laya, constantly, effortlessly, without any Karpritva, Bhokritva. No, that is the Mahakarma. Then Krita Karma. Krita Karma means Bhagavan is praised here as Kritarthaha. Kritarthaha means the one who has done all that is to be done. Yeah, that is nothing is left out or left half done. You know, or after doing, we say, oh, I wish I could have done it better or I could have done it this way or that way. Then the mind will rewind, but not so. Bhagavan is Krita, Krita Karma. Krita Karma means what is to be done is done at the right place, right time. That is done and then no looking back and it's effortless. And uh, so here Bhagavan is praised as Krita Karma. Then Krita Gamaha. Now here Krita means done or created and Agama. Agama means the Vedas. Now many names are there for Vedas. No? Brahma, Veda, Agama, Nigama, Nigata. All these are names for the Vedas. So you are uh, the one who has authored the Vedas. You know, the Vedas are considered the breath of Ishra. Before the Srishti begins, it is the Shwasa of the of Bhagavan. So that is the last Nama here. Shubhango Loka Sarangas Tutantu Stantu Vadhanaha Indra Karma Maha Karma Krita Karma Krita Gamaha then we have 85th shloka here. Udbhava sundara sundaha, Udbhava sundara sundaha, Ratna nabha sulochanaha, Ratna nabha sulochanaha, Arko vajasana shringi, Arko vajasana shringi, Jayanta sarva vijayi. Jayanta Sarva Vijayi. And so here the Namas are Udbhavaha, Sundaraha, Sundaha, Ratnanabhaha, Sulochanaha, Arkaha, Vajasanaha, Shringi, Jayantaha, and Sarva Vijayi. Sarva Vijayi. There, uh, you have to split it as Sarva Vitta and Jai. Okay, we'll come to that. So, the first uh, na Nama here is Udbhavaha. Udbhavaha means uh, Udbhavaha. Bhavaha is manifestation. Ut means Utkrishtaha. The most superior, the most exalted appearance. And this is referring to the avatars. Now when Bhagavan chooses to manifest, then that birth is a Divya Janmam, which is not by the power of karma, but it is Svechaya, by the own will, by the own will or by the power of Maya, Bhagavan can assume any form for to fulfill a divine mission, to do something which is called upon, uh, as the need of the hour or the yuga. So that is the meaning of Udbhavaha. Then Sundaraha. Sundaraha means very attractive and handsome. So we see all the avatars are beautifully described, you know, with Shubhanga and Chandanam and ornaments, Kundalam, Kesha, weapons and all that. But here we have to see that even the terrible forms are beautiful. Like Lakshmi Narasimha. And then Lakshmi Narasimha also look at that awesome glow and that, uh, that, that fierce look is also very beautiful. So Bhagavan is praised here as Sundaraha always, even in the most terrible forms. Yeah. Then Sundaha, unusual Nama here, Sundaha, Sundaha, 
Acharya explains as the one who melts our hearts. So why? Because Bhagavan is the source of unending compassion. Now when we contemplate upon, look at all the nourishment we are getting unconditionally and most compassionately. So Sundaha. No? Sushtu Unnati Iti means the one who melts everybody's hearts. That is the golden heart of Bhagavan. No? Sundaha. Then we have Ratna Nabhaha. Now Ratna, you know, is a jewel. Nabha is Nabhi, navel. So one meaning is, of course, whose navel is uh, like a golden jewel no? or a precious stone. And another meaning that uh, Shankaracharya gives is, you know, the earth. The earth is uh, called as uh, Vasundhara or Ratnanabha because the earth has hidden wealth, hidden precious stones, diamonds, gold, fossil fuels, you know, foliage, all these are tapped and become potential sources of wealth. So, Ratnanabha is uh, another word for earth, Bhudevi. Then Sulochanaha, Lochana means eyes, so Sulochana is Padma Lochana with beautiful eyes. And the eyes also we can understand is as beautiful sight or knowledge also. Whose knowledge is perfect is Sulochanaha. Then Arkaha. We know that one of the namas for Surya, the Surya Mantras is Arka. Arka. But another meaning is from the Dhatu Arch. Arch means to do Archana, to praise. So, Bhagavan, you are worthy of Archana. Archya Yogya. Archaniya Yoga. Yogya. So, you are fit to be praised. Then, Vaja Sanaha. Vajam, we have seen where? <laughs> Katha Upanishads. Now, Vaja Shravasaha is the one famed for giving, distributing Vajam, that is Annam, food. So here, Vajasanaha praises Bhagavan as the giver of Annam, Vajam to all. Yeah, Bhagavan is the only source providing the herbs and the entire foliage, you know, the primary source of food. Vajasanaha. Then Shringi. Shringa, we saw earlier also. Naika Shringaha, that Nama, Shringaha means a horn. A horn or a peak. So if we take the horn meaning, then Shankaracharya mentions the Matsyavatara. In the Matsyavatara, there is a story of uh, how that horn of the Matsyavatara saves uh, uh, this king. You know, this king and the boat at Pralayakala <laughs> and pulls the people along with the boat to safety. That is one meaning. Then another meaning of Shringa is a mountain peak. Stavaranam Himalayaha. Bhagavan has said in chapter 10, Vibhuti Yoga, that um, I am present as his glorious uh, peaks that you see. So that is the Nama of Shringi. Then Jayantaha. Jayantaha means uh, the one who is the cause for Jayam. Jaya is what? Jayam is victory. In fact, Jaya is the older uh, original name for Mahabharatam. No? Uh, Mahabharatam, where we saw in the Dhyana Shloka also, no? Sotirna Kalupana Vedanadi Kaivata Kakeshavaha Sa Rananadi Uttirna. That is, Bhagavan says, in the Dhyana Shloka, I just described how, because uh, Krishna is the Kaivartaka, the boatsman, that uh, battle like river, Mahabharata Rananadi, was crossed by the Pandavas. So, Jayantaha is praised as, you know, you are the cause of Jaya. 
which means dharma alone wins satyam eva jayate you are that satyam you are dharma and uh, you cause you know one to win yeah there may be immediate wins for the wicked but ultimately what you know only the satyam wins and then we have the last nama is sarva vijayi so we saw the double j there you no know? so one is sarva vitt and jayi so sarva vitt means uh, we have seen in the mundaka bhagwan is praised as sarva vitt and sarva sarvagnya sarva vitt means uh, the one in fact the one and only one bhagwan is the only one who can know all the minute details of all the worlds and all the species you know like if we wonder you know why does the rose smell different from a jasmine yeah and why does one only see the one side of the moon is visible to us we don't have the answers <laughs> but bhagwan is sarvavit means knows everything then the other word is sarvagnya sarvagnya means knowing the essential swarupa which is satyam jnanam anantam brahma and that jnanis are also sarvagnya but sarvavit knowing in detail can only be you bhagwan so you are sarvavit and jai is ever victorious that is you are always um, you know a victorious so these are the namas in uh, in the 85th verse uthava sundara sundaha ratnanabha sulochanaha arpo vajasana shringi jayanta sarva vijayi we just chant the other shlokas also from 81 and then we'll conclude tejo vrisho dyuti dhara sarva shastra vratam varaha prakraho nikraho vyakro naika shingo gada krajah chatur murti chatur bahu chatur vyuha chatur gatihi चतुर्भावस्तुर्वेदेकुभांगोलोकसारंगस्तुतंतुस्तंतुवर्धन इंद्रकर्मा महाकर्मा कृतकर्मा कृतागम उद्भव सुंदर सुंदर रत्नाभ सुलोचन अर्को वाजस न श्रृंगी जयंत ओ स्वस्ति प्रजाभ्य पिपाल न्यायन मगेन मही महिषा गो ब्राह्मणेभ्य शुभमस्त नि लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु काले वर्षतु पर्जन्य पृथ्वी सस्यशालिनी देशो यंशो भरहित ब्राह्मण सन्त सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिन सर्वे सन्त सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु ज्योतिर्गमयोर्मृतंगमयूर्नमदूर्नमदूर्नाशिष्य शांति 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 हरि ओ श्रीगुभ्यो नम हरि ओ